everybody, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here, hi, I'm Mercury. So welcome to another day on Liberty of the Seas. So I just woke up and I had such a good night's sleep. I actually, I'm kind of shocked because I had to remind myself, like I, I rolled over and I, I woke up, I opened my little eyes and I was like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna roll over and go back to bed. Then I had to think, I was like, Mercury, you're in an inside cabin, you're in an inside cabin. You have no daylight and no sense of time. What time is it? Y'all, I looked at the clock. It was 9.30. Like, Mercury, get up. Get up. The day's starting. I, I'm usually, when I'm at home, I'm usually up at 8 o'clock. Like, I'm like a bird. When the sun comes up, I'm like, oh, it's time to be awake. And, like, 8 o'clock is sleeping late for me. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, slept in. I slept in, but I guess that's uh that's how it should be, and that sort of speaks to, you know, just a how great day one was that I had to rest it off, and two how comfortable the room was that I just I slept I slept. So there is an event I want to go check out at 10:30, um, which is like the top tier event is what they call it. Basically, it's anyone who's like emerald level and above um, has access to go see it. And it's usually like some sort of show or performance, you know, it changes ship to ship. So I wanted to go and see it. But first, breakfast, breakfast. I need some food. Let's go up to one jammer. Let's go get some brekkie. So I got my breakfast, but you might notice it's windy and I'm not in the wind jammer. It was so busy in there, it was so packed. Like I could not find a table, even just for one person. I couldn't even find one of the stools at the counter. So busy. So I was like, okay, I'll go out on the pool deck and eat. And it's raining, it's pouring out. So I found, I found a little lounger. So I'm just, I'm just sitting and eating on the lounger. No worries. As long as I have a place to sit and put my food down, I'm good, I'm good. So I'll, I'll show you my breakfast. It's my typical, it's my typical. So I got some oatmeal with some cinnamon, raisins, and some almonds. And then over here, I got a little omelet and a little fruit. So the downside to not eating inside the windjammer is there's no uh, wait staff with coffee. I gotta go get my coffee now. I could have totally brought it down here. Now I know for another day. <laughs> this is like the hoof and claw, it's like the pub. Yeah, I could have totally done that. They don't care if you bring like your plate of food to other venues, other locations. So that's good to know. Okay, the search for coffee at the Cafe Promenade. Being that espresso is on the board, you know they got it. Uh-oh. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. They had the brass band, the High Seas, um, I guess they call it the High Seas Orchestra Band, and they played a bunch of songs. They actually started a little bit early, and they played a, a few, I want to say like three different songs to warm us up. They actually, they celebrate the um, Crown and Anchor members, so they called up the three people who had the highest amount of points on the sailing, and they recognized them, and they gave us like a breakdown of like, by category of like, um, loyalty level, how many people were on board. And they also had a performance from one of the singers who is in the, the Broadway style production sing a song for us. It was a lot of fun. And I'm also starting to think that like the theme song for this trip is September, like Earth, Wind and Fire. Because when I was at the cruise terminal, it was playing in the background. Then I went to the silent disco last night and that was one of the songs that played. And the High Seas Orchestra Band just played a brass version of September. So that is becoming like the theme song for my cruise this time. So let's go see what else I could get into. I have no idea. The, the world is my oyster right now. I have no idea what I want to do today. It's a little rainy still. Seas are a little rough, so I am taking it a little slow because I don't want to get like whooshy. You know, it's, 
We're out in the open ocean. It's a little bit rough, but it's okay. It's not, it's not terrible. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see what I can get into. I was about to go to the casino and I'm walking along. I'm minding my own business. I go to hit the elevator button and what is there? I found a duck. I did it, I found a duck. I didn't have my camera with me because I was going to the casino. Sorry, but I did, I found the duck. It didn't come with a tag, so I made a tag for it and I'm gonna rehome the duck. So let me show you the tag I made. So I had a little piece of paper in my stateroom and I wrote, oh, what luck, you found a duck hidden by Mercury on Liberty of the Seas. And here's the duck. And uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go hide this thing. For me, for me, the trick of hiding a duck is it has to be someplace obvious and you know there are rules to hiding a duck there are certain places you're not allowed to put a duck like you can't put it in stores or in the pool or things like that but you want it to be a place where it will be found and not right away that that is for me that is my my criteria and i think i have the perfect place for hiding this duck see see the doggo on the balcony we're gonna put it by the doggo on the balcony let's go let's do it Okay, so this is where we access the doggo. The dog is here, total access. And we'll put the duck right there. Good luck, get homed. I will come back and check on that duck a little later, make sure it finds a home. So I decided I wanted to find a place to sit and read for a little bit. It's still a bit overcast out, it's still a little, a little damp. So I came up to the Viking Crown Lounge and I'm just gonna sit and read for a little while. But this is the view I have while I'm reading my book. But you could see all the, the water dripping down the window. Yeah, it's still a little bit, a little bit moist out. But beautiful view. And I recently started reading Red Queen. So that is the book of choice for this voyage. And this is the, uh, this is the lounge. Nice chill place. So I was getting very hungry. Um, I came down to the Windjammer to get some lunch, but I, I don't just get hungry, I get hangry. So I got my plate, I'm gonna eat. I'll show you what I got. I'll show you what I got, but then I'll go and I'll show you what's actually on the buffet because I needed to get some food in me first. So I got this cucumber tomato salad, some lemon roast chicken, and some butternut squash. And when I finish eating, I'll show you all what the buffet looks like. So the section up front is called Jade, and this is where they have some fruit, but they also have a selection of Asian-inspired meals. So first you start out with some salads. Then over here they have some stir-fried veggies, some pad thai, we have some rice. And then over here we have um, some roti and some curries. And they also have a few desserts up here too. Then if we continue on, this is like the windjammer section back here. So at each of the stations, they have these rolled up silverware and the plates. And here they have a salad station. So you have the two different types of lettuce, and then you have all of the different toppings. Then they have a selection of cheeses and meats, and they have a carving board. There's also a few different types of bread and dinner rolls, even though it's lunchtime. I just call them dinner rolls. They have two different soups. Today they're offering a beef consomme and a smoked potato soup. Then over here we have some mashed potatoes and gravy and also a lamb stew. Then this is what I ended up getting. This was like a rosemary lemon chicken and it was pretty tasty. They also had some hush puppies. They had a, veg uh, they had a vegan meatloaf, so that's over there. And some broccoli. There's also a section here with rice. They got pork chops. They have a lentil chili. And that's the butternut squash I got. And that was really, really delicious. And of course, dessert. So it looks like we have a red velvet cake. We have a chocolate cake. They have a pistachio cake and a coconut custard tart. Oh man, if I could have sugar, I'd be all over this stuff. But self-control, Mercury, self-control. So now that I finished lunch and it was delicious, um, came down to, I forget what this venue is called. Um, it's on deck five at the end. It's sort of like above the theater. Um, they're gonna have some trivia going on. So I am here waiting for some trivia. Yeah, I like trivia. It's fun. It's, it's probably one of my favorite activities on board. So it's gonna be, um, I think, name that classic rock. It's like name that tune, classic rock. 
And then later on, we're gonna do some Disney trivia. They have House of the Mouse going on. Disney song number one. <laughs> Oh, y'all, and that I feel old. Oh, goodness. Moving along. I don't know if I'm doing good or bad. We'll see. Let's see, this, this is how I did. There were one, two, three, four, five I outright did not get. Although a few of them I know, but I couldn't place. My neighbors got a perfect score. I will do Good the job, neighbors. <laughs> so I had so much fun at trivia. Oh my gosh, our host was a hoot. He, he, he just like, he made it so much fun. Um, I can't even put into words, like he started out the trivia like, I'm gonna sing the song and you're gonna guess. And then he just like, was like intentionally singing very badly. <laughs> and then like, he kept going and people were like, are, are you serious? Is this how we're doing it? And he's like, no, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Bye. But, but I have a question, y'all, and I'm, this is a serious question. Um, when, when did music from the 90s become classic rock? Because in my brain, remember, in my, my Gen X Daniel brain, classic rock is the 60s and 70s. When did the 90s become classic rock? And, um, yeah, I guess. I guess that means I'm classic. I am classic like a fine wine. That's how I'm taking it. But seriously, when did when did this shift happen? When did Nirvana become classic rock? Because uh... <laughs> but but in all in all seriousness, it's you know, I'm just happy to have another day. Yeah, I will I will joke and poke fun at myself about, you know, generational things, but the reality is aging is a gift denied to many and I'm just I'm grateful that, for the days that I have. So Okay, on that note, what else to do today? I don't know. I gotta figure it out. So I came back to my room for a quick costume change. And by costume change I mean tonight's fancy night. And the next trivia that I want to go to, the Disney trivia, it kind of bumps up against dinner time. So I won't have time to come back to the room to change for fancy night between trivia and dinner. So I figure I'll, I'll just get changed now. So since I did a costume change, let me show you which of the three dresses I decided on. Because I, I tried them all on and I wore them all with the boots. And this was my pick for matching the boots. because. I really wanted to wear the, the Bowie boots. The Bowie boots were sort of like the, sort of like the, the anchor piece. And I had to build whatever I wanted around it because I was, I was set on the Bowie boots. I have my little red and black dress on and it has like little skulls in lace on the red. But look at the Bowie boots. Love the Bowie boots. There's a costume change, y'all. So the, uh, the other thing is I have a little jacket. So that way if I get chilly, you know, I have a little jacket. And the thing with this blazer, I feel like a ringmaster every time I wear it. No matter what I have on under it, I feel like I am ready to like lead the circus into town. So yeah, I'm happy with this decision for fancy night and I'm gonna just chill. I'm gonna do some Disney trivia and then I'm gonna get some dinner. So I have returned to the Star Lounge. That's what it's called, the Star Lounge. And I'm here for the, the Disney trivia, House of Mouse. Let's do it. Let's see how good my Disney brain is. Topolino in Italy. Is it a Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Stitch, or Donald Duck? What is her name and what movie? Talking about the movie, not the real, real world. We know. Off to a good start. Hippos How was correct. Two. Name this character from Disney. Oh, I that put the name of the movie. Whoops. 
<laughs> Whoopsie. Who is the first Disney prince to have facial hair? Ryder Flynn. There we go. Woohoo! Ryder Flynn. Not too shabby. I got 18 out of 22. Not shabby. So I had a lot of fun at trivia today. I had a lot of fun with everything today. Um, it's time for dinner, but I'm going to call it here. So with that, I am done for the day. I'll see you all real soon. And until then, stay inspired by everyone. Take care.